Abdominal paracentesis slash pleural paracentesis, most commonly include abdominal paracentesis. Introduction Abdominal paracentesis is a safe and effective diagnostic and therapeutic procedure used in the evaluation of a variety of abdominal problems, including ascites, abdominal injury, acute abdomen, and peritonitis. Ascites may be recognized on physical examination as abdominal distension and the presence of a fluid wave. Therapeutic paracentesis is employed to relieve respiratory difficulty due to increased intra-abdominal pressure caused by ascites. Midline and lateral approaches can be used for paracentesis, with the left lateral technique more commonly employed. The left lateral approach avoids air-filled bowel that usually floats in the acidic fluid. The patient is placed in the supine position and slightly rotated to the side of the procedure to further minimize the risk of perforation during paracentesis. Because the cecum is relatively fixed on the right side, the left lateral approach is most commonly used. Most acetic fluid reaccumulates rapidly. Some experts recommend that no more than 1.5 L of fluid be removed in any single procedure. Patients with severe hypoproteinemia may lose additional albumin into reaccumulations of ascites fluid and develop acute hypotension and heart failure. Cancer patients with malignant effusions may also need repetitive therapeutic paracentesis. Intravenous fluid and vascular volume support may be required in these patients if larger volumes are removed. Image not available after diagnostic paracentesis, fluid should be sent to the laboratory for gram stain, culture, cytology, protein, glucose, and lactate dehydrogenase levels, and blood cell count with a differential cell count. A polymorphonuclear cell count of greater than 500 cells slash MM3 is highly suggestive of bacterial peritonitis. An elevated peritoneal fluid amylase level or a level greater than the serum amylase level is found in pancreatitis. Grossly bloody fluid in the abdomen, greater than 100,000 red blood cells slash MM3, indicates more severe trauma or perforation of an abdominal organ. The classic positive test for hemoperitoneum is the inability to read newspaper type through the paracentesis lavage fluid. Definition Abdominal paracentesis is a bedside clinic procedure in which needle is inserted into the peritoneal cavity and ascites fluid is removed types 1 diagnostic small quantity of fluid is removed for testing 2. Therapeutic more than 5 liters of fluid is removed to reduce intra-abdominal pressure and relieve the associated symptoms like dyspnea abdominal pain indications for evaluation of new onset ascites testing of acetic fluid for evaluation of patient with the ascite test who has clinical signs of deterioration like fever, abdominal pain, hepatic encephalopathy, decreased renal function and metabolic acidosis parasynthesis can identify unexpected diagnosis such as chylus, hemorrhagic, or isnophilic. Ascites useful to know etiology and antibiotic susceptibility equipment Disposable paracentesis slash thoracentesis kits usually include the following, antiseptic swab sticks fenestrated drape lidocaine 1%, 5 ml ampoule syringe, 10 ml 2 inch long injection needle number 11 blade scalpel 14 gauge catheter over 17 gauge times 6 inch needle with 3 way stop cock or 1 way valve, self sealing valve and a 5 ml lure lock syringe syringe. 60 ml tubing set with roller clamp drainage bag or vacuum container. Specimen vials or collection bottles, 3, gauze, 4 inch times 4 inch adhesive dressing indications evaluation of ascites fluid to help determine etiology, to differentiate transudate versus exudate, to detect the presence of cancerous cells, or to address other considerations evaluation of blunt or penetrating abdominal injury relief of respiratory distress due to increased intra-abdominal pressure evaluation of acute abdomen evaluation of acute or spontaneous peritonitis evaluation of acute pancreatitis contraindications acute abdomen requiring immediate surgery absolute contraindication severe thrombocytopenia platelet count 20 times 103 slash muel coagulopathy International normalized ratio INR greater than 2.0, in patients without clinical evidence of active bleeding, routine labs such as prothrombin time, PT, activated partial thromboplastin time, APTT, and platelet counts may not be needed prior to the procedure. Severe bowel distension, use extra caution, multiple previous abdominal operations pregnancy, absolute to midline procedure, distended bladder that cannot be emptied with a Foley catheter. Relative contraindication, obvious infection at the intended site of insertion, relative contraindication, severe hypoproteinemia, 
relative contraindication, intra-abdominal adhesions massive ileus with bowel distinction primary fibrinolysis patients with disseminated intravascular coagulation The procedure Patient preparation Explain the procedure and obtain consent No fasting before procedure position Mostly supine head may be elevated knee elbow position for removal of minimal fluid Independent area equipment and staff doctor and assistant bottles should be labeled for test prior doing paracentesis site left lower quadrant Dullness on percussion 3 cm medial and 2 cm above the anterior superior iliac spine not near umbilicus because the presence of collateral vessels surgical scars and visible veins should be avoided. Step 1. Mark the site as X and positions 12, 3, 6, 9 a few cm from X. The insertion sites may be midline or through the oblique transversus muscle, which is lateral to the thicker rectus abdominis muscles. Step 2. Empty the patient's bladder either voluntarily or with a Foley catheter. Place the patient in the horizontal supine position, and tilt the patient slightly to the side of the collection, usually the left lower quadrant. Slightly rotate the hip down on the table on the side of needle insertion to make that quadrant of the abdomen more dependent. The insertion sites are shown. Step 2 Image not available Step 3 Prep the skin with povidoniodine or chlorhexidine solution, and allow it to dry while applying sterile gloves and a mask. See Appendix E, Skin Preparation Recommendations. Pearl, prep a wide area so that an undraped area is not inadvertently exposed if the drape slides a little. Step 4 Center the sterile drape about one-third of the distance from the umbilicus to the anterior iliac crest. Step 4 A image not available Step 5 Local anesthesia Infiltrate the skin and subcutaneous tissues with a 1% solution of lidocaine with epinephrine. A 2-inch needle is then inserted perpendicular to the skin to infiltrate the deeper tissues and peritoneum with anesthetic. Step 6 Insert the catheter slash introducer through the skin. The non-dominant hand then stretches the skin to one side of the puncture site, and the needle is further inserted to create a Z-tract slash anesthetes using 3 to 5 ml of 1% lignocaine solution in a Z-tract technique needle for it is 1.5 inch which is sufficiently long. Insert do needle and syringe 5 mm deep pull the plunger back with each advancement to see if any blood is aspirated inject the lignocaine gel solution. Continue the same procedure until the needle enters fluid aspiration should be intermittent not continuous if continuous, it mapple the bowl for omentum onto needle tip, occluding the tip yellow color fluid indicates needle is in the peritoneal cavity step 6 image not available step 7 advance the catheter until a pop is felt and the catheter penetrates the peritoneum. Release the pressure on the skin after the introducer enters the peritoneum. Advance the catheter into the abdominal cavity. Step 8 Remove the introducer, and attach the syringe. Draw the fluid into the syringe. If no fluid returns, rotate, slightly withdraw, or advance the catheter until fluid is obtained. If still no fluid returns, abort the procedure, and try an alternative site or method. Ascites fluid may be removed by attaching a three-way stopcock or one-way valve, a 60 cubic centimeter syringe to one arm, and drainage tubing and bag to the other arm. If lavage is desired, such as for detecting hemoperitoneum after trauma, connect intravenous tubing to the three-way stopcock. Remove excess fluid and then infuse 700 to 1000 ml of ringer lactate or normal saline into the abdominal cavity. Gently roll the patient from side to side. Then, remove the fluid as described above or using a trap suction arrangement. Ultrasound guidance can be used to guide the procedure rotating the needle for 90 degrees or more will pierce the peritoneum and help the drainage step 8 image not available step 9 after the procedure, gently remove the catheter, and apply direct pressure to the wound. Observe the characteristics of the fluid, and send it for the appropriate studies. If the insertion site is still leaking fluid after 5 minutes of direct pressure, suture the site with a vertical mattress suture. Apply a pressure dressing. Initiating flow of fluid Small amount of fluid may be difficult to drain because omentum or bowel may be blocked at the end of the needle so multi-hole needles are helpful testing 25 ml fluid is enough for cell count, differential count, chemical testing, and bacterial culture 50 ml for smura and culture pitfall, gauze dressing should be applied when rare, persistent drainage occurs. Complications Abdominal radiographs should be obtained before paracentesis, because air may be introduced during the procedure and may interfere with interpretation.
Perforation of bladder and stomach, emptied prior to the procedure to decrease the risk, bowel perforation laceration of a major blood vessel loss of catheter or guide wire in the peritoneal cavity abdominal wall hematomas pneumoperitoneum bleeding perforation of the pregnant uterus catheter residue broken into abdominal wall infection persistent leak from the puncture site postperacentesis hypotension dilutional hyponatremia post procedure instructions the patient should be instructed to monitor the bleeding of the area and return if any abnormal bleeding is noted the patient should also be educated to call with questions or concerns regarding pain, numbness, or discomfort in the area. The patient should also monitor for evidence of infection. Lastly, the patient should be advised to clean the area with warm soap and water and pat the area dry.